basically, I w wouldn't do anything my parents said when they finally decided at the age of 16 they'd let me go, more or less. I went, I went out to work one day, told my dad I'd be out late on the Friday night, come home and bags were packed. I'd made homeless, went down to London and basically spent a certain amount of years on the street. It was about four weeks before I finally made my up, made, made, made mind, a decision. Made my mind up to go in, in and talk to staff. Because yeah. basically, without an address, I couldn't get benefits. And without benefits, it's very hard to survive. Why did you leave London as to travel down to St Paul's? Basically, I left London to try and rebuild bridges and to try and find somewhere to, to live. I Basically, I went in into housing benefit and spoke to an homeless officer and they referred me to the hostel. I went in at 10 o'clock on a Friday morning. I was booked in at 3 o'clock on a Friday afternoon. God, that's good. Usually you've got to wait four or five days. Yeah, you normally have to wait. Longer than that. You have, normally you have to wait for a vacancy. Yeah. When I come when I come into St Paul's, I found it very helpful. Basically, a, because when I was on the street, I couldn't get all my medication that I required. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. yeah. That's a, yeah. Well, that is. The minute, uh, the minute I come into St Paul's, I had all the help to sign on, sort my medication out, and get me put back on the straight and narrow. Basically. What's good soil? It's a project where where residents from the hostel can go and learn about animals, agricultural, potting plants. So it's good therapy as well. Yeah. Basically, it's learning new, new skills. I took on reading and writing literacy groups and having my CV put together with Jerry. Yeah. So, uh, and you now work, well, you're going to start a job. And I've also so now got a part-time job. You've got it, uh, so you, you properly... So you're doing well. Yeah. Uh, so where will you move on from when you've achieved all your, well you've got this job and basically, you're, to, you're re reversed with some balls? Basically next step from here is into my own accommodation. What is the resettlement project? Basically the resettlement project is where you move on from the hostel, it's the next stage one from getting your own property. Basically what they do, they put you in here for a short while, it means you can Prove to them you can cook, you can pay your bills, look after yourself. Thanks to places like this, which should be and should be respected, it's yeah, put me back on my own place Thanks. now. Look. I ain't in a resettlement. I went through what they call the system and stuff like that, and I've got my own place. Oh, yeah, it's a little just push just it's to it's start you on your way. Have you done every job on the farm, Dave? Every job, no. Every job what's actually on this plot of land here, have you ever... Yeah. Have, you've done every yeah. one? Clean all the top off, top, clean out the boxes. They're fed first thing in the morning, the afternoon, and that, that keeps them going through the day. Basically, this is where we register, write down all the eggs we collect, and if, they, if any of them are dirty, they need to be washed. By, by water. That way then they're clean to be sent to the shop. We, co we cut the windows out. We've actually got a guy just carpentry on site. Basically I get a lot of enjoyment out of coming here. It's free it gives me my freedom from the hostel. I'm learning new skills to put up things to put onto my C V and it's just an enjoyment to come out to the farm. The man sits on the lonely bench outside the hostel in which a room he rents. He sits there contemplating life and how he came to lose his wife. A vodka bottle tied in his hand, no one seems to understand. She won't let him see the kid, exaggerating the things he did. Now the house is repossessed and the bailiffs took the rest. He listens to gossip going on, to everybody's next con. The DHS won't give him any cash. They say his paperwork is trash. A couple of doggings in his tin are not even... So the money that we have coming in is really from supporting people and that pays for the staff salary and we are then funded by housing benefit 
that pays for the actual hostel accommodation or your accommodation in the shared house, okay? I'm funded through the lottery bid, okay, lottery bid I had to do, and that pays for my salary, the chef, because he's a support chef and he trains people in the kitchen, and for the kitchen assistants. Do you find that the actual hostel is overrun by volunteers? Do you have enough volunteers? Oh, that's a good question, Paul. Uh, we never have enough volunteers. Never, no, have enough. never have enough. Are you ever short of a volunteer? Do you get people stepping forward? And mm, we don't wanting... always get people stepping forward, no. Um, and sometimes, yes, we are short of volunteers. We, we have volunteers who do the evening meals, and we used to have two volunteers every night, and we've dropped down now so much that we've asked everybody to come one a night. So nothing changes, nothing changes, no, nothing changes. As a key worker, I generally give four main clients to take care of out of the 46 that are here. I take a special interest in them and I help signpost them to whatever needs they may have, which may be benefits or it may be health orientated or housing and often a combination of all of these. There's many different reasons for ending up homeless, so as I say, my job's not to be a specialist in any areas, but I do need to understand the types of areas that are needed within the homeless community. What other way do you help residents? Um, I help with um, a lot of basic life skills, really, like I know Jerry does reading and writing and literacy and stuff like that. But I help with basic reading and writing and rest of the business and stuff like that, you know. The measurements um, and Yeah, that's it. Budgeting. Budgeting oh, will do a lot. Got, have you still got a course going? Did you do a course? Yeah, yeah, there's a six lesson round course. Yeah, yeah cool, that's it. Uh, yeah, people go people go through these lesson plan courses and stuff. Uh, but that's the main thing, is that it's giving them confidence and stuff, you know. With the cookie and they gain confidence to move on. Is the no child really needed? It is, yes, definitely. There's currently about sixty rough sleepers in Worcester City and the county. Um, so the probability is that they'll want to accept the night, access the night shelter, so yes, it's needed. Would it be possible to extend the opening hours? Not at the moment, because we've only got funding for 16 weeks, and that's all. Someone has been through the St Paul's hostel system. Do you think there's enough uh, resettlement properties for them to move into, especially for the women? So enough houses out there? Well, houses. No. no. There's never enough, but it's something we're working on. It's all on our agenda. Um, we're always looking to expand. We have three houses, plus a dry house at the moment. Yeah. We may take on another four bedroom house. We'd like to develop an all year round night shelter or facility specifically for rough sleepers. Um, and we'd like to use the model, what we use at the night shelter with no second night out. So that means basically anybody who arrives new on the street should not spend a second night on the street, so we want to adopt that model. Um, we're working quite closely with um, other voluntary and statutory bodies to try and get funding and premises from all year round night shelter. So yeah, again, it's always top of our agenda. <laughs> so we get the majority of our funding from supporting people, which is a government funding initiative, um, which we're reviewed annually for. We're looking at cuts, um, per hour per direct um, support we give clients this year. So I think we may be looking at about £36,000 in cutbacks just from supporting people. The rest of the money comes from housing benefit and personal contributions, so clients top up to make up their money. Um, we also rely quite heavily, particularly this year with all the cuts, on fundraising and donations. Yeah.